Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last two videos, we have solved a linked list and three data structure questions. And in this video, we're going to solve a more advanced nonlinear data structure, which is graph. And the question is core schedule. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be constantly solving good and classic legal question with clear explanation, animation, and visualization. Now let's look at the question. In this question, there are a total of number courses we have to take and label from zero to num courses minus one. And we are given an array prerequisites where each item is an array of two elements, AI and BI. And it indicates that we must take the course BI first uh, if we want to take the course AI. So for example, the pair uh, zero one means that we have to take uh, course one first in order to take course zero. And we will return true if we can finish all the courses, otherwise return false. For example one, there are two courses to take and to take a course one, we will finish a course zero first. So it's possible to finish all the courses. But for example two, the prerequisite array is array of one, zero, zero and one. And you can see there's a loop of prerequisites here. So we are not able to finish all the courses. So in this case, we will return false. And the data constraint, the number of courses can go to 10 to the power of five. To solve this question, first, we have to translate the prerequisites into another uh, data structure. So for example, a prerequisite uh, zero one, you can think of it as an edge in a directed graph pointing from node 1 to node 0. Because it means that in order to finish a core 0, we have to finish course 1 first. And from example 2, you can see that if there is a cycle or a loop in a graph, then we are not able to finish all the courses. So now the question will come down to detect a cycle in the directed graph. And a common algorithm to solve this is topological sort. And here's the definition of topological sort uh, for your reference. So a topological sort of a directed graph is a linear ordering of its vertices such that for every directed edge uh, uv from a node u to v, u will always count before v in the ordering. And the implementation algorithm is a DFS that first search. Now let's see the code in action. Here we'll be looking at an example of uh, four courses. And the prerequisite array is array of 1, 0, 0, 2, and 3, 1. And here's the visualized graph. Node 2 will point to node 0 because uh, course 2 is the prerequisite of course 0. And then node 0 will point to node 1 and 1, 2, 3, and so on. And for every courses, we'll have a visited array. And it has uh, two types of flags, negative one and positive one. Negative one means that this course is being visited in the previous DFS call. So if it is uh, visited again, then we will know that there is a cycle of this uh, node. And positive one means that this course has been visited and no cycle has been detected. So the visited array is the key base condition of the DFX function. Okay, and the first step is to build a graph from the prerequisite array. And for this example, the graph will be looking like this. The graph is represented as a hash map. And the key value pair is uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 3 and 3 doesn't have any child. So from the graph, you can see that there's an edge pointing from node 0 to 1, and then 1 to 3, and 2 to 0. And next, we will start to DFS the graph. So starting from node 0, we will flag it as negative 1 in the, in the visited array, and then go to its uh, child, which is node 1. And again, a flag node 1 as negative 1 in the visited array, 
and then go to its uh, child, node 3. And node 3 will be flag it as negative 1 as well. And here, node 3 doesn't have any child or neighbors. So we have finished uh, this DFS call and we didn't find any cycles along the path. So all the previous nodes in the DFS call will be flagged to positive 1. It means that this node has been visited and no cycle is detected. And now the only node that has not been visited is node 2. So we will start another DFS call from node 2. So again, uh, flag uh, node 2 to negative 1 in the visited array and then DFS into its neighbor, which is node 0. And from the previous DFS call, node 0 has been visited and no cycle is detected. So this DFS call can end here. So we will change the flag of node 2 to uh, 1 in the visited array. And now we have all visited all the nodes and no cycle is found. So in this example, we are able to finish all the courses. So this is an example with no cycle. But what if we tweak it a little bit, add an edge from node 3 to node 2? Then obviously you can see that the whole graph will become a big cycle. And again, we will start DFS from node 0 and then flag all the nodes in the DFS a path to negative 1 and eventually the DFS call will come back to node 0. And right now the visited flag for node 0 is negative 1 which means that we have come back to this node which is being visited so we have fallen into a loop. So in this case uh, we are not able to finish all the courses because a cycle is detected. And this will conclude the algorithm. Finally, let's review. So the key approach to solve this question is to translate the question into detecting cycle in a directed graph. So we can use a topological sort to solve it. And the implementation algorithm is a DFS, depth first search. And the key base condition is from the visited array, where we have two flags. Negative one is the node is being visited. And positive one is the node has been visited and no cycle. The time and space complexity of this approach are both linear because we have to traverse all the nodes in the graph and we need to build a hash map to represent the graph. And that will be all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.